Akira Tendu is a 21-year-old who is glad to find his dream job at a production company, he has always dreamt about doing it and is excited to pump out advertisements for big companies, on the very first day, he meets Sari Oatori, a colleague from the accounting department, and falls madly in love with her. After working hours, Akira and his new friends go for dinner at a nearby restaurant and Oatori is also present there, Akira feels as if things are finally falling into place. But everything soon takes a turn for the worse, it turns out that the dinner was just a short break, and Akira still needs to do overtime with his colleagues. As if this was not bad enough, some of the people he meets at his work often brag about working for hundreds of unpaid hours. Although there is a very liberal leave scheme in place, it turns out that it is eyewash made to see the company in a good light, Akira slowly starts losing his sanity as he starts hating his job. But in all this chaos, he finds some consolation in the fact that he gets to meet Oatori, the woman he loves, sadly this little happiness turns into a nightmare when Akira learns that she is having an affair with his boss. He slowly becomes used to his lifestyle but stays at the same company even though it makes it miserable. Three years pass, and Akira just wants to stay home, his expectations of a good life are over, and he has given up on his dreams, one day when he goes to see his building manager, he is shocked to find him eating another human, soon afterward he is chased down by a horde of zombies who are thirsty for his blood. After he finds some rest after being chased down by a horde of zombies, Akira thinks about Oatori, although he knows that she is having an affair with his boss, he feels that he cannot allow himself to hold on to the emotions that he has for her, therefore he takes the risk and decides to head to her apartment. Standing outside her door, Akira feels a bit scared, not sure whether he should even be there, but then gathers all courage and enters, that's when he finds his boss standing right in front of him, wearing nothing but his underwear, it is obvious from the way he looks that he has been zombified, Akira still remains quite calm and composed. He expresses his deep satisfaction with his job and then tells him that he is resigning from his position, Akira then pushes his boss through the window and onto the street below before he could potentially hurt him, naturally he immediately turns his attention to the other room, hoping to find Oatori. But when he finally sees her, Akira knows from just one look that he is too late, Oatori slowly turns into a zombie right in front of his eyes, although Akira should have run for his life immediately, he again shows remarkable courage and calmness, he goes on to express his love for Oatori even though she obviously cannot understand him anymore. When she starts chasing him, Akira runs as fast as he can while saying his last goodbye to his first love, later that evening, he takes a rest in front of an abandoned store, he feels that life is always unpredictable, and now that he is in the situation that he is in, Akira decides to live life to the fullest instead of regretting anything. Akira has just woken up from his nightmare, after cleaning up his apartment, Akira rewards himself with a cold beer, which probably tastes better to him on this day than anything he has ever tasted, then he has another one. Then he's out, with the staircase full of zombies, Akira climbs down the neighboring building where he meets and affably greets a surviving couple, he tells them he needs to head out for an errand, and agrees to get them some ramen and toilet paper as the woman requests, Akira's bike ride to the nearest konbini safely, singing a stupid song about beer. Then he encounters another survivor, a young woman in a tracksuit and hoodie, he introduces himself then asks for her contact info as a fellow survivor, but she doesn't show any response. The woman has a logical explanation for declining to share info, the fact he's gone on a beer run under these circumstances tells her a lot about his prowess for lacking risk analysis, when zombies come through the door, the woman simply stands there looking at her folding phone. Akira instinctively jumps in front of her, but then she grabs him by the scruff and throws him backwards, just in time to prevent him from getting iced by a runaway truck. The woman on top of Akira has her eyes glittering and hair flowing gracefully in a hail of glass and stone, to him in that moment, she's a goddess delivering him from oblivion. But before he can thank her, she's already off. Pedaling her high-end bike like the wind, Akira wonders if he'll ever see her again, as his bike was smushed by truck he finds a scooter with the keys in, then quickly upgrades to a Harley Hog. On his climb back up to his apartment, he greets the survivor couple only to find their apartment has been attacked and they're gone, as the sun goes down Akira drinks the rest of his beer in a less celebratory and more somber mood, 
He also decides to start compiling in earnest his bucket list of things to do before becoming a zombie. Some of the items he can already cross off, confessing to Oatori, cleaning his room, bumming around, others are long-standing items he's never gotten around to, like living out of an RV, then there's some has to think a little more about, like going home to spend time with his parents, he ends up with a preliminary list of 33 items. From here scene shifts to tracksuit lady on the morning of the pandemic, she has no alarm she simply opens her eyes at the stroke of 6 am, runs 10 kilometers on her treadmill, takes her course of vitamins, and listens to the news and emergency alerts. She's no nonsense, precise, disciplined and has a strict routine from which she only deviates if circumstances demand it, mirroring Akira's path, she immediately starts a spreadsheet, not of things she wants to do before becoming a zombie, but how to avoid becoming one. She starts by watching a bunch of zombie movies for research, then heads out on her bike and camera with a list of essentials, while at the konbini, she considers taking a sakura machi, but one of the items on her survival list is, minimize sugar intake, so she abstains, Akira shows up on her stream, then strolls in merrily singing his goofy beer song. She immediately pegs him as a short-sighted naive who is only thinking about his immediate needs, and thus someone to avoid, the truck crash unfolds as it did from Akira's perspective, but thanks to her camera she knew it was coming, and to shove Akira out of the way, back home she goes over her video footage, lingering on shots of Akira when they come up. She's surprised that a single beer could make someone as happy as Akira looked even in such a state of emergency, she also recalls the Sakura Machi she left on the shelf, and wonders if she should have taken it after all. At the club showtime, a young girl cries and he thinks about the people she has lost in the zombie apocalypse, when Sho notices her he reassures her that everything will be okay and he will make sure that he protects her, that's when he is informed that the zombies are returning so he and his men go outside to fight while the refugees hide inside the club. Elsewhere Akira's internet finally works, and recalls his college friend Kencho, Akira contacts him immediately and learns that he is somewhere in Shinjuku, the city is filled with zombies and Kencho tells him not to come, but Akira has already made up his mind to rescue his best friend and hangs up the call after asking him to text him his address. As he drives towards Shinjuku, Akira recalls his last meeting with Kencho, after graduating Kencho found a great real estate job which has allowed him to live a luxurious life, Kencho brags about dating models to Akira which irks the latter since he is stuck in a toxic job, Kencho asks him to quit but he does not have the courage to do it. Meanwhile the zombies have killed almost everyone outside the club showtime and Sho feels that he will die now, but for some strange reason the zombies all of a sudden retreat, allowing him to live another day, after arriving in Shinjuku, Akira manages to track down Kencho's location thanks to the address that his friend texted him. Meanwhile Kencho is surprised to notice that the zombies have suddenly all gone off somewhere and the hallways are completely empty, that's when Akira finally meets Kencho and starts crying profusely, he reveals that he regrets the fact that he continued doing his toxic job despite the fact Kencho had asked him to quit it a long time ago. Akira feels that his best friend from college was right and he finally sees the wisdom behind the advice, as he cries profusely Kencho can barely react and eventually gathers courage as he also wants to tell him something, but before he could talk the zombies return once again. In order to save themselves, the two friends rush to the terrace immediately with the undead closely chasing them, when they reach the top they close the door and block it with anything they can find there, but Kencho knows that the door won't hold on for long, as Kencho feels that his life is about to end, Akira is lost in his own thoughts. When he turns to see what his friend is up to, Akira reveals that he thinks that the building across the street is close enough to jump, Kencho thinks that the idea is suicidal and tries to stop Akira, but Akira is too fast and confident, he manages to jump and lands roughly on the building. Although he is injured he reassures Kencho that everything is fine. Despite Akira's heroic actions Kencho feels that he does not have it in him to pull off a jump that long, Kencho apologizes to Akira and tells him that he doesn't think that he can make it to the other end, he then confesses that he used to brag about his life because he was not happy at all. Kencho felt that he convinced a lot of people to make bad investments and despite partying with famous people and dating beautiful girls he never felt happy, he then goes on to reveal that he always wanted to be a stand-up comedian and had no interest in the real estate business.
Akira listens patiently to his friend and eventually manages to motivate him to jump, luckily Kensho manages to make it to the other end alive and the two of them drink beer together. After managing to narrowly escape the zombie attack, Akira and Kensho turn the terrace into their base. They have a great time together and appear to have no regrets. When Kensho cooks delicious food he mentions that a man must know how to cook. He also pokes fun at his friend that his poor cooking has been the reason for his inability to get girls. Naturally Akira does not like these comments and challenges him that he will find a girl to date today. The two friends later go to the market to get a flat screen TV as Akira had it on his bucket list. When they end up at a roadblock, a runaway truck hurtling in their direction threatens to put their life in danger. Akira drives his bike into an underground tunnel that is connected to a showroom. Since they are flocked by zombies, they enter the showroom and close the shutter. That's when Kencho and Akira learn that they are not alone there. Three flight attendants named Yukari, Maki and Reika are there along with an old man who looks really nervous and does not really talk to anyone, all of them get to know each other, they end up dining and drinking which shocks Kensho and Akira as doing it was literally on their bucket list. Akira eventually ends up drinking too much to impress the girls and ends up in the toilet where he vomits uncontrollably, after getting drunk Maki and Kensho head to the furniture department on the upper floor and have fun there, Meanwhile Reika complains about the decline of the aviation industry and her job in particular. The old man suddenly jumps between her legs. Reika feels that he trying to sexually harass her but it turns out that the old man has actually been hiding a zombifying injury on his leg. Now he has already turned into a zombie and managed to bite Reika as well. Elsewhere Yukari helps Akira who is vomiting in the toilet. She rubs his back and reassures him that everything will be okay. When Akira feels better he asks her why she decided to help him, it turns out that she just felt bad for him and reveals that she already has a boyfriend, the two end up striking up a conversation in which Yukari confesses her insecurities, she has lately started questioning her decision to become a flight attendant after being scolded by the old man. Akira tells her that he worked for a toxic company and could not muster the courage to quit even though he hated it, as he looks back at his decision now, he feels that he was living someone else's dream, he asks Yukari if her dream of becoming a flight attendant was her own or not. Meanwhile Kensho has heard the commotion when Reika gets bitten by the old man, when he comes down with Maki he almost gets bitten too, unfortunately Maki is killed in the attack, when Reika tries to injure Kensho again he smashes her head, although she has been zombified at this point, he feels sorry and thinks that he has taken her life. All of a sudden he remembers that the old man is missing, as Yukari is about to say something, she feels that someone is approaching from behind, when she turns around the old man leaps at her and bites her neck, Akira manages to punch him and push him down the stairs but it's already too late. Yukari knows that her fate is sealed now and asks Akira to go away, but he hugs her instead, she turns him around and tells him that a flight attendant once rubbed her back when she was young. Her kindness made her dream of becoming like her which is why she chose her current career. Now that she looks back Yukari has no regrets, as she pushes Akira away, the old man attacks her again and kills her, Akira and Kensho manage to run away with a flat screen TV as they had planned, when they get back to their base, Akira adds his desire to recall his childhood dream to his bucket list. After thinking hard about his childhood dream, Akira realizes that he has always deeply desired to become a superhero, that dream has stayed with him, till now and in the middle of the apocalypse, he wants to make that dream come true. When he shares his desire with Kencho, his friend naturally feels quite confused since he always has no superpowers to pull off something so extraordinary, later they visit an aquarium to get a shark suit that can protect people from dangerous bite injuries, Akira turns it into a superhero suit and soon they run into a crisis situation. A group of people are being chased down by zombies and the duo decides to help them get shelter in the aquarium, Akira ends up fighting a group of zombies alone and thanks to the suit he stays unharmed, Interestingly the group of people also includes Shizuka whom Akira had met a while ago. Akira tries to talk to Shizuka in the aquarium but she questions his motives to become a hero and leaves him dumbfounded, the situation takes a dark turn when a shark zombie infiltrates and panic ensues, in a hurry one of the survivors there pushes Shizuka who falls to the ground and is left behind while others escape. After managing to escape the hall, Akira looks for Shizuka and realizes that she is not there, 
Meanwhile Shizuka has accepted her fate and sits helplessly on the ground as the shark zombie approaches to eat her. All of a sudden Akira jumps from the air conditioning vent and pushes the zombie away just when it is about to leap forward and eat Shizuka. In spite of all this Shizuka is still critical of Akira as he came to the place unprepared and does not even have a plan. Akira accepts his flaws but claims that he does not always need a reason or a plan to do something, as life is oftentimes just about listening to one's heart and taking the leap of faith. Now that the shark zombie is not going to stop, the duo must come up with a plan, at first they flee trying to avoid the zombie as much as possible, suddenly Shizuka asks Akira if he is willing to risk it all on a plan she just came up with, Akira replies in the affirmative and the two run until they go in opposite directions. The shark zombie chases Akira while Shizuka goes to grab something, it turns out that she knows that sharks have electric receptors in their head that can be used against them, she plans to give the shark a shock in order to try to make it lose consciousness, however it is still unclear if the plan is going to work or not. By this time Kencho has also appeared at the air conditioning vent and tries to draw the attention of the zombie towards himself, he removes all his clothes which makes the zombie attack him, while the shark is distracted, Shizuka arrives there with the batteries that she needed. Akira calls out the shark zombie and when it tries to attack him, he punches it with the electric batteries, giving it a shock that makes it lose consciousness immediately, as the shark zombie lies unresponsive on the floor, the trio finally takes a breath of relief. Later that evening they leave the aquarium, parting ways with the large group they just met, Shizuka is still very careful of Akira as he is as reckless as he was ever before. Furthermore his goal of living his life to the fullest before becoming a zombie is unacceptable to her as she wants to survive the apocalypse instead. Because of the conflict in the fundamental goals, Shizuka feels that she should part ways with Akira, but moments before Akira is about to drive away on his bike with Kencho, she exchanges her number with him arguing that there is no harm in doing so. Although Akira and Kencho's life has been going well until now, Things get complicated when the electricity cutoffs the water supply is halted, and the network services appear to shut down as well. In the present scenario, it's obvious that the society is falling apart but Kencho and Akira can't do much about it. However when they notice the sky without the city light, they are mesmerized by the beauty of the night sky, this makes Akira emotional as he recalls his childhood with his parents in the village, Kencho notices this and the two decide to go look for his family. Since the journey is long and unsafe, the duo thinks that they should get an RV, but when they arrive at a showroom they are shocked to see Shizuka there, although she initially does not want to work with them, the two friends eventually manage to convince her, they take too much time to pick an RV and are attacked by a huge group of zombies. So they end up taking the one they can and flee the showroom, as they are trying to leave the city, Akira and his friends reach the bridge and are surprised that there is no traffic, Shizuka explains that most people never got the time to flee as the zombie apocalypse was the fastest virus to have ever infected the human race. Akira is quite intrigued by this statement as he is not sure how she came to the conclusion that a virus is the reason behind the present day chaos, Shizuka is quick to point out that all the symptoms of the people infected leave no doubts that this is exactly the case. Just as they are driving away a belt of spikes on the road bursts their tires, and Akira and his friend's journey comes to an unexpected halt. Since Kencho was driving a bike he sustained a lot of injuries and couldn't really get up on his own, that's when a group of buses approach them and stop right next to their vehicles. Akira is shocked to see Chief Kosugi from his company in front of him, he is there with a group of young men wearing a baseball team kit, Akira has suffered so much harassment at his previous company under Kosugi's leadership that he can barely gather the courage to talk to him. But he eventually manages to gather enough courage to tell him that he is glad that his boss is safe, the fear on Akira's face is quite obvious and Kosugi is still very rude to him as he mentions that he did not expect him to survive the apocalypse. Now that Akira and his friends are in need of help, Kosugi tells them that he has new tires for their vehicles and also a first aid kit so that Kencho can receive the medical assistance he needs, Kosugi mentions that he can never abandon an employee of his in a situation like this, his words move Akira to tears as he appears grateful. Unfortunately this emotion is short-lived as Kosugi asks him to work for him in return, Akira suddenly has a flashback of all the horrible moments he suffered under him and appears unsure of what to do but he later agrees when he learns that he will only have to work for two days, 
Kosugi, and his men take Akira along with his friends to their company. Akira is assigned to lift goods and reinforce safety barriers that offer security from zombies, at the company he notices that people are been exploited and it is obvious that Kosugi's men have been putting spikes on the highway road to manipulate people to work for him, but since he has no choice Akira keeps his head down and works hard. Meanwhile Kencho receives the medial help he needs and appears to not have sustained any serious injuries, he has noticed Akira's strange behavior in front of the chief and wonders what could be the reason behind it, Shizuka recalls her own childhood and reveals that it is because of a deep-rooted fear that Akira is yet to overcome. At Kosugi's shady organization, Akira and Shizuka are forced to work for him in return for the help they were provided, Shizuka notices that Akira is slowly losing confidence in himself and is giving in to the manipulation. She recalls how her father always put her in pressure to be the best, Shizuka is the daughter of a very successful businessman who wanted her to be perfect in every way, the ruthless pressure she had to endure was too much but she kept doing what she needed to do according to her father, as she looked at Akira she saw herself in him. One day Kosugi told Akira how he was doing him a favor by letting him work for him, he managed to sow seeds of doubt in him and Akira started doubting everything, when it's finally time to leave behind Chief Kosugi's controlling company, Shizuka and Kencho are ready to go. But it's not the same with Akira who is still overwhelmed by what Kosugi had told him the previous day and feels that he needs to pay for the kindness he has received from the chief. Furthermore Kosugi has been successful in manipulating him and instilling the idea that he won't be able to survive in the uncertain world outside. So it's better for him to just stay put at Kosugi's company where daily survival is almost guaranteed, therefore Akira tells his friends that he will not go with them. Although Kencho is shocked, Shizuka does not even try to convince him and accepts his decision. Kencho is worried for his friend but Akira keeps talking about what he needs to do, this infuriates Shizuka as she is reminded of her past and she tells him that he needs to stop talking like that. She explains that she has spent her whole life trying to live according to people who had told her what she needed to do, this manipulation has ruined her life as she has always lived according to someone else, it was Akira who managed to give her a new perspective on life and Shizuka started living more freely. Therefore she is quite appalled to see him in his present state, her speech works as Akira finally gathers the courage to face Kosugi and apologizes to him for quitting. Although Chief tries to manipulate him his words have no effect, just when they are about to drive away a truck with supplies arrives there. When it is opened a zombie that has been hiding inside comes out and attacks one of the men there, panic ensues as everyone starts running for their lives, Kosugi tries to calm them but his words appear to have no effect as well, in the moment of crisis Akira convinces Chief's men to work with him. They come up with a plan and start putting it into action. Meanwhile Kosugi is chased by a group of zombies and Akira saves his life, he and others manage to push zombies into a corner and surround them with trucks. As they have nowhere to leave Akira uses dynamite to kill them all, most people manage to survive the incident, Kosugi tries to take control one more time but everyone there decides to quit his tyrannical rule and fend for themselves. For their next destination Akira and his friends are heading to his parents' village, on their way they notice someone in a van being attacked by a huge group of zombies, by the time they get out of their vehicle and try to distract the zombies, someone comes out of the van wearing a traditional war costume and kills all of them one by one. The person is later revealed to be a foreigner named Beatrix who arrived in Japan because of her love of Nippon culture, however by the time she got there the pandemic had already spread. Now she is carrying a van full of fish as she plans to take them to a sushi chef in Takahashi as she desperately wants to eat sushi. Despite the risks Akira offers to help her get there so that she can fulfill her wish, the quartet is attacked by a huge flock of zombies but Shizuka shows remarkable presence of mind to deal with them, they eventually reach Takahashi and get to enjoy the sushi with the chef himself. After that they decide to find a hot spring as they have not cleaned themselves properly in a while. When they finally get to the open air bath, Akira and his friends are excited as they have not really been able to wash themselves properly in a while. Finding a hot spring with no one to disturb is an unexpected gift for them. So without thinking for a second Akira and Kencho just jump into the water, 
Shizuka naturally plans to use the women's bathhouse, but she is dismayed when Beatrix informs her that there is not hot water there, Akira and Kencho offer to let the ladies take a bath with them in the men's section but Shizuka is understandably repulsed by the idea. However Beatrix is quick to point out that Kanyoku bathing is a proud culture and historical practice of Japan. So there is nothing to be ashamed of, she opens her gown and is about to jump into the hot spring when Akira and Kencho are suddenly attacked by a zombie, it turns out that the open bathhouse has countless zombies hiding under the water. The quartet is quick to flee the location and somehow manages to take shelter at a deserted location after climbing a huge rock wall, they eventually fall asleep together, when Akira later wakes up at night he feels thirsty and starts looking for water, that's when he ends up coming across a natural hot spring in the middle of the forest. Without wasting any time he jumps into it desperate to get the much needed bath. But he is shocked when he finds Shizuka there bathing naked, the two eventually decide to take a bath at the same time by staying on opposite sides of a huge boulder, as Shizuka starts to relax. She apologizes to Akira for her rude remarks about love earlier that day. She explains how her controlling father never approved of such things, so it has become second nature for her to be inflexible and intolerant of emotions live love, furthermore she also talks deeply about her insecurities and fears about falling for the wrong person. Eventually she says that she would like to fall in love with someone she can talk so openly with like she is doing right now with Akira, this leads to an awkward situation between the two, but Beatrix and Kencho soon arrive there as well, so Shizuka and Akira do not get to talk after that. As Akira and his friends reach close to the village, Akira recalls how he looked down on his father for working as a farmer, he appears to feel sorry for his thinking and wants to desperately do something meaningful for his parents, before Akira and his friends get to the village, they are shocked to find a tunnel that is closed off from both ends. When they get closer they realize that it is filled with zombies, therefore they decided to continue their journey on foot through the mountains and the forest. While going through the forest Akira and his friends save an old man named Kumano from a boar zombie. When Akira learns that he is building a treehouse he gets excited since it's on his bucket list. Therefore he and his friends delay their journey to help Kumano build the treehouse. They later arrive at the remote village to learn that everyone including Akira's parents is safe, it turns out that the villagers had trapped the zombies in the tunnel. Akira wastes no time in thanking his father for everything he has done for him but Teruo remains cold and distant for some reason, while Akira is concerned that he is not doing enough for his parents, his father Teruo appears to be hiding a dangerous secret, while he is alone in the evening Teruo looks at his hand and there is blood on his palms. He has been hiding it from everywhere by keeping that hand in his pocket all this time. Sometime later that evening as Akira and Teruo are walking back home, the former sees a group of people walking past them, he sees a guy and feels that he has seen him before somewhere, the suspicious looking guy that Akira comes across is actually Kanta Higurashi. He used to live in a city before the zombie apocalypse and was quite upset with the low paying jobs that were offered to him, Kanta could not figure out when he started falling behind other people his age but he eventually started feeling rejected by society and hated everyone. One day when he was walking through a dark alley, Kanta saw a woman being attacked by a zombie, soon enough he realized that the world that had turned against him was burning and he felt relieved, he celebrated the destruction of the society that had rejected him. Sometime later Kanta three people like him and they all sat down to write a bucket list that was in a way a revenge on the world for everything that has happened to them, a few females helping Akira complete his dreadlocks bucket list item, then the girls discuss their previous lives with Akira, one of the girls reveals she was a makeup artist for the zombie film Akira watched during the anime's start, Confirming this information causes the woman to recall events that happened to her and her film crew when the zombie pandemic began. While this woman is depressed about what happened that day, the other female wants to remain positive and live peacefully in Akira's home village, meanwhile an old woman named Tomi thanks Shizuka for assisting the village. We shift to Kencho receiving intel about the village's cesspit from a villager, Kencho spots a girl nearby. The villager informs Kencho that she's a city girl who lost her family to the apocalypse, 
Kencho juggles Daruma antiques in front of her and informs her about his desire to become a professional comedian, after giggling we learn the girls are named Anju and the dog is named Charo, then Beatrix discussing with a female villager about the village's hydroelectric water wheel. The female villager shows Beatrix the water wheel's earth leakage circuit breaker, explains its functions and warns her not to touch it, the woman who calmed the makeup artist down says she feels at ease in this village, she feels this way because of the village's limitations, convenience and hospitality. Later Kencho reunites with Akira and the two discuss their village experiences, Kencho spots Higurashi nearby and calls out to him, Higurashi notices Akira next to Kencho and leaves, Kencho reminds Akira that Higurashi was a student who attended the same genet classes as them, Higurashi wanders the village, he's frustrated that Akira and Kencho are here. However his mood changes when he recalls his nefarious plans for this village, at night Akira and his father drink, Akira notices his father looks off, he tells his father he wouldn't mind staying in the village to assist him and his wife with things, Akira's father argues Akira should follow his dreams and leave this village. Akira tells his father he wants to repay his debt to them, meanwhile Higurashi's gang enacts their plan and frees the zombies behind the barrier. Later everyone notices someone freed the zombies, Akira's father tells Akira to reunite with his friends and promises him he'll take care of his mother, Akira reunites with Beatrix Kencho and Shizuka, and they learn someone tampered with the electric circuit breaker, then Higurashi and his pals greet our protagonists and reveal they're the ones responsible for this travesty, Higurashi argues that they will all become zombies eventually, so he and his buddies don't mind causing trouble until that time comes. Shizuka tells Akira they should focus on evacuating the villagers, Beatrix plans to shut down the electrical fence's generator while Akira says he'll focus on giving back to his parents. Shizuka tells everyone to reunite at the suspension bridge once Beatrix shuts off the electric fence, Kencho notices Anju rushing toward the village and chases after her, meanwhile Higurashi's female companion notices Beatrix and plans to stop her, Higurashi tells the others they can do what they want. Akira's father mother and the others struggling against the zombies, Meanwhile Akira's fighting off zombies and hopes he'll be able to reach his folks soon, meanwhile Anju finds Charo having a frisky time with a chicken and stops him, Kencho arrives and leads Anju and Charo to the rooftop, he tells Anju they'll be safe up here. Suddenly one of Higurashi's pals arrives and fights Kencho, then Shizuka tells Tomi and Hiko that she wants to help them evacuate the village, Tomi insists Shizuka leave her and the others and save herself. Shizuka refuses and leads the zombies away from Tomi and the others, simultaneously Akira wards off zombies who are trying to reach his family and other survivors who are with them, Akira tells his folks he hasn't done enough for them yet and refuses to die until he achieves that goal. Frustrated Akira's father grabs Akira tosses him inside, and asks him to protect his mother, Akira's father leaves the shelter and plans to confront the zombies in Akira's steed, in a flashback the man who is fighting Kencho's horrible lifestyle, Shizuka, and her encounter with Higurashi's obese gun-wielding comrade. This man chases Shizuka down because he wants to French kiss her badly, in a flashback of his life he used to work at a restaurant, he was a chef who started a fire at a restaurant leading to him getting the boot, in the present the obese man says it was unfair how he got fired and states how unlucky he is. Suddenly Hiko wakes up from a nap and calls out Akemi's name, elsewhere Beatrix, and the woman stop fighting for a moment, Beatrix asks the woman why she's doing something evil, in a flashback of her life, learns she was a bossy individual who was upset that she couldn't get her way. Kencho shares his opinion on the man's situation, grabs his weapon and sends him hurtling off the roof alongside him, Kencho removes his clothes and jumps into the nasty cesspit to hide his scent, the zombies chase after the man and he rams into the electric fence. Kencho exits the cesspit and gives Anju and Charo a thumbs up, signaling to them that he's okay. Meanwhile Hiko gives Tomi and the others a motivational lecture to instill hope in them, simultaneously Shizuka discusses the recognition hyperfocalization theory with the obese man, the obese man ignores Shizuka's words and states he's the lucky one in this situation. Suddenly Hiko shoots at them from afar while more elderly people arrive at the scene. 
They jump the obese man and leave him critically wounded, Beatrix hops atop the water wheel and with the zombie's assistance destroys it. The woman's baffled that Beatrix tackled this situation wrongfully and succeeded, Beatrix leaves the woman to die at the zombie's hands. Elsewhere Akira's father fights off the zombies attempting to harm his son and the others, however his father succumbed to his illness. Before the zombies attack him Higurashi arrives and saves him, Higurashi asks Akira to come outside and get zombified in front of his eyes. If Akira refuses Higurashi will toss his father at zombies. In a flashback of Higurashi's life, it revealed he has friends in childhood but due to his introvert nature he couldn't able to make friends in high school and college, thus it led him to become the broken individual he is today. One day he noticed Akira discussing things with his friends, Higurashi says Akira should have been as visionless empty and ambitionless as he is. In the present Higurashi teases Akira to come outside, Akira's father tells him to remain inside, his father doesn't want him or Akira's mother to perish before his eyes, additionally he tells Akira he doesn't have much time left. Akira's mother reveals Akira's father has a bad growth on his body, Akira says they can find a cure and worries he won't have a chance to show him gratitude, Akira's father tells Akira lists ways he can give back to his parents even after they've passed on. Akira opens the door letting the zombies inside, Akira screams and exits the shelter in a zombie-like state, thinking he's won the battle Higurashi laughs, Akira approaches his father and Higurashi, he grabs a hold of Higurashi and slams him to the ground, Higurashi realizes Akira faked his zombie transformation and wonders how he pulled it off. Akira had the female makeup artist apply ink to his face to make him look like a zombie, then he opened the door and screamed, once the zombies entered the female makeup artist and others defeated the zombies with weapons, Higurashi is enraged by Akira's genius plan. Akira asks Higurashi about his plans and Higurashi says he wants to have a chance to do things he's always wanted and have fun with it, while lost in thought a zombie bites Higurashi on the leg, and he realizes his time on earth will be coming to a close soon. Akira asks Higurashi what he wants to write down on his real bucket list, Higurashi says he simply wanted to have a fun time at the public pool with his friends again, it's revealed via flashback that Akira approached Higurashi during their college days and asked him if he wanted to grab food with him and others. Instead of accepting Akira's offer Higurashi runs away, Akira says he should have told him sooner, he promises Higurashi he'll attend a public pool outing with him if he ever becomes a zombie, Higurashi pushes Akira aside and rushes toward the zombie horde, he reaches a river and hops inside it. Meanwhile Kencho and Shizuka reunite with Akira and his group by the electrical fence, Beatrix follows close behind and destroys the fence with the village's water wheel, they reach the suspension bridge but realize it's broken, suddenly Mr. Kumano arrives with a spare bridge and hands it to Akira. Akira and Kencho toss the bridge on the other side and urge everyone to travel across it, once everyone reaches the other side they use the bridge to swing to their side, Shizuka and Beatrix check on them and relish knowing Kencho and Akira are alright, Kencho and Akira climb the bridge and discuss Higurashi's actions. The following day the villagers barricading the zombies inside the highway's tunnel, Shizuka and Tomi discussing what's happened so far, Tomi says Mr. Kumano decided to stay in the village and is helping them rebuild the village, at night Akira sits by his father's bedside, his father is slowly suffering from his body growth problem. When Akira's mother brings up his father's daily concerns for him Akira cries, Akira asks his mother what his father's truly suffering from and she tells him he has hemorrhoids, he's perplexed yet glad it's not something too horrible. Akira says his new goals are to find a cure for the zombie infection and to convince his father to attend a hospital for his hemorrhoid issue, Akira adds his goals to the bucket list and asks the others if they want to add anything, after saying goodbye to Akira's family and the villagers, Akira and his friends head off to their RV to save the world. So this is the end of anime, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it.